Hey, welcome to the shop. Um, I'm working on some balusters for the staircase. You know, that staircase project, it includes many parts. So I've been chopping off some stock uh, for the balusters. I've got some basswood, uh, which is clear, and uh, I've got it. Uh, I cut down a tree a couple of years ago. Eight. Don't tell anybody. I hoard a little. Um, anyway, I cut down a tree. I had some stuff, you know, you don't know what you're going to cut, make it out. So cut me some four inch, cut me some three inch, cut me some two inch. And I uh, don't really want any one inch basswood. So uh, everything worked out fine except uh, uh, the two inch um, isn't perfect. You know, imagine that. It's not perfect. Um, so I've been cleaning it up. I need 26 balusters. I need to have 26 turned in case I make a mistake or two. Um, anyway, so here I've got, uh, you know, almost 20, 19. The other seven are a little bit too thin. I was thinking they were going to be an inch and three quarter. Everything was going to be fine. Uh, I really think now I've been to the job, measured it again, had a sample baluster in my hand, and I really kind of think I want to be 13 sixteenths. One and thirteen sixteenths. So uh, I'm not going to get it out of eleven of them. So I'm going to plane them up, glue them together. They'll be little quarter inch. I don't know. We'll just say quarter inch, five sixteenths inch pieces glued on after I clean them up, clean up the pieces, glue it all together, and then replane them all. But that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I don't want to dig through the pile. I've got a piece of two inch at the bottom. The problem is if I unpile the entire stack of wood to get to that one piece of two inch basswood that I've got at the bottom and then it turns out it's got knots in it or something or a crack down the middle and I can't use it I'll be bummed <laughs> so anyway um, I'm gonna go plane some stuff I'm gonna rip some stuff uh, gonna, you know, then I'm gonna do a big gang up gluing and then tomorrow I'll come and plane all that down and what with the basswood uh, all pieces all cut out of the same wood out of uh, all cut the same direction, the grain running the same way, glued up in the same humidity, the pieces will all glue together, it'll stay, they'll be fine, they're going to be painted, no one will ever see any of it, and it'll never telegraph any of that joint issue. I'm pretty confident that I'm not making a mistake, but I do want to prepare it all so that, you know, that there'll be no mistake, right? That's how you do it. You do everything you can think of to make sure that something doesn't go wrong. And that way, if you didn't think of quite everything, you've got some backup. It's a theory. We'll go with that. So join me over here. I'm going to do some planing, and that's boring. And then I'll do some sawing. That's kind of boring, too. Um, and then we'll do some gluing, which has its moments. We all know. Um, and then I'll go home, play some video games. Be great.
okay, I'm not really complaining. It, it, it's my own damn fault. But but this is what happened. I, I thought they were two inch thick pan, plank. It only turns out the, the the guy that sawed these for me does a great job, but he's got a little mill. I mean, it's not a huge mill, and this was a big, big basswood log, and it really it threw its weight around, as they say. And so when he cut it, it cut you know reasonably well until it got to the ends, or it cut reasonably well in the beginning and then took a dive, whatever. But this is what happened. I've got one side's pretty good, which is great, but the other side not so much. And and I was. I was measuring the log or the bore, the plank from the ends. Hard to measure the middle. And this is what happened. I ended up with a bunch of stuff that's too thin. I'm going to glue it up, laminate it together. You know, I'm going to straighten it, flatten it, join it, plane it, and glue it. And I'll have a big piece. It'll be great. Don't worry about it. Watch it happen. So, these are those two belt pieces. I'm going to do a little hand planing on them to make them perfectly flat on this side and then I'll take the bell off in the planer. A little bit. There we go. Super! Do that a couple of times, right? It's not really bad, just not really good. Story of my life, right? Oy. We'll see how these work in the plane. So here we go. Um, this is going to be a textbook glue up. Textbook. 
Why I say that, I don't know. Because um, I, I usually screw up something, right? I'm going to use Type On 3 glue. I'm really not sure why. Uh, I think because I really just want to glue one side. I think. I think that's the reason. Um, and I think that uh, this will do it. And I don't care too much about the excess glue because I'm going to take it all off, planing and whatnot. Uh, it's also ideal conditions for something like this. Uh, it's, it's warm and dry. So is the wood. I probably could get something better to uh, apply it with, but I didn't. Should have used a roller, probably. Smart people would. I may yet. Okay, I'm going to turn around and look. I've got a couple more of those to do. So that's that. That's my book. I'll do that. How quickly can I get a hold of a roller? That's how long it took to get a roller. Now how long will it take to get a roller cover? Um, longer than that. Because I happen. Here we go. Back to this. Here's a cold, hard truth. I don't heat my shop. So whatever glue is left over at the end of this season will get thrown away in the spring. So it's certainly not going to be the glue that's the problem here. It's coverage, right? That's what we're talking about. Good coverage. I can do that. It's time. Yeah. Yeah, if I was worried about time, I'd have done this project differently, I think. I don't know. What I'm really concerned about right off the bat is pissing the turner off. Yeah, I'll turn this out. All right, I'm gaining. I'm gaining. Look at me go. Okay. Dry right there. Took care of that. Okay. All right. Looking good. Looking good. All Looks good. Looks good. I think that'll do it.
Okay, next time I swear, I invite you over to watch, I'll get some roller covers. Oh, come on. <clears throat> there we go. Jesus. All right. Boom. Shakalaka. All right. Good. 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 Do that. I think this is too tight. Better. All right, now, here's a theory of mine. So I've got glue, which has thickness in bunches of joints. So after I've drawn it up tight with each of the clamps, it then squeezes some of that glue, and you can see it squeezing out of the joints. So that glue once squeezed out, takes up less thickness. So you have to go back and tighten your clamps all again because the thing you're gluing has sort of shrunk. So that's what I'm going to do now. And it's not much. Just a little bit. All right. Glued. Um, and I got glue squeezing out of all of the joints. Not much on that one spot right there, but every place, these two joints, these two joints, these two, these two, glue, which means I have glue in the joints. And, you know, they all look tight at this point. So this is great. I'm glued. I'll leave this right here. I have the luxury of doing that. Because this is uh, Labor Day, and I get to go home. Great. Thanks for watching. We'll see how this turned out. Hi. It's the next day. Uh, I don't know about you, but this is my favorite part, breaking down the thing that you just glued. I love how that works. So turning all the handles half a turn, not sure why, and then back. The metal has flex in it, I guess. Anyway.
good. That's the thing you always worry about is why you've got glue on one of these. And, all right, so glued together. Need to scrape these things flat enough that I can run them through the planer. That'll be great. I'm going to set them aside as I admire my work. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, clean up the bench because I made a mess. And I think I'll get a scraping tool and do a quick, quick scrape on the bars on the lower one too because they're a mess. All right, let's get to that. This is a silly thing probably, but this is a chisel that I had. Broke the handle off. Broke the stem right there. Snapped it. Chiseling a piece of really hard wood. I never threw the chisel away. And I just use it as a hand tool for doing all kinds of little things. The edges are pretty crispy and square. And I uh, use it. <coughs> Clean off the glue. Pretty darn nice. I haven't done it for a while, but I, every now and then, will clean the bench off, run a sander across it. And uh, give it a wiping of uh, linseed oil. Fills the pores so that the glue, like this, just doesn't really stick. It's kind of nice, right? There's a little mechanical bond because the surface is rough. But there's no uh, adhesion. I'm going to be playing with finished materials on top of this thing. So right now, I'm going to take yet another moment and run a sander across it if I can find a sander. And I didn't know where they are. sanding project at the house the other day. Putting a coat of sealer in my brick floor in the, the old kitchen, in my modern kitchen. Anyway. Throw some 80 on that. I'm just going to buff this area right here. It's as easy as that. It's as easy as that. All right, so now clean these things up a little bit and run through the planer. Sticking out. 
doesn't seem right. That'll work. A bunch of some glue dripped, drip, 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 drip. More profile on the bottom, less profile on the top. At least that's what I believe. Take care of the glue. Now, any misalignments, another thing altogether. All good. All good. This is down. I see. This is down. This is up. I see it. This will be great. We'll see you uh, over at the planer. pieces. So I'm going to take this edge and this edge and cut just as little as I need to out of this piece I moved in the center. 
And let's check the blade for square to the bed of the saw, because that's going to be important. And boy, that's not quite right. And that is beautiful. And that, interestingly enough, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. And that reads zero on my scale, which is uncharacteristic. Now let's check the fence. Fence is pretty darn good. Not perfect though, as you might expect. All right, good. That's done. Now I've got the thing set for a little bit under two inches, and that's going to be fine. Now, I'll run them through the planer now one more time to reference this new, new freshly sawn side, and then uh, and then it's take the whole batch of them and start running them through, running them through. I want them square, so I've got to get one, and and I want them all on one setting. The Turner was very specific; he wanted everything square on planed on one setting, all of the pieces. So, because he's going to set his tooling up to accept that size piece. So, I have to get everything, all the preliminary work done, squaring and then straightening and the rest of that, which I mostly have done. And uh, then I can uh, run it all through on one setting. And he'll be happy, because this is all about making the, the Turner happy. Because unhappy Turners are, you know, let's face it, they're no good. Okay. So I'm good. I'm good. This is gonna be fine. I don't know why I'm worried. goes like this. Uh, I'm just about to start the last half on the faces. I haven't done the sides yet. So I'm really close. Two more passes and I'm done, I think, on everything. But I'm looking in there and I there's a set of rollers inside this that uh, makes it so the wood doesn't have to slide across the bed and have all of that friction. And the rollers are set just a teeny, 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 teeny bit above the surface of the bed. Only, <coughs> I've got pitch and wood juices all over them. There's bits of wood stuck to them. I work a lot of pine, right? And there's pitch. So it's time to clean the bed before I go any further. <coughs> Not much of a big deal. Um, Sharp piece of metal, slide back and forth on the rollers. Could be almost anything. And uh, then some steel wool and some thinner. I've got the steel wool and I've got the thinner. So I'm good on that. Uh, so let's, let's see what we can do. You want to see inside? I'll show you. Here we go, planer. It's a little jet, 15 inch. I put a helical head in it, and it's kind of nice. Doesn't make a lot of noise, and this is what it's inside. Those are the two rollers that I mentioned. 
they roll nicely they're just above the surface but it's a mess and you can see the scars of little, little bits, bits of, of uh, warfare you know there's the nail a screw uh, an errant stone that something picked up scratches the bed I don't particularly care about that anyway we do some cleaning It's really no big deal. As far as maintenance goes, this is the simplest of all things, right? This is like washing. So get some of this on to soften up the, the, the pitch. You know, it's, you can tell in my voice, it's not perfect, but yeah, I don't know that I was really looking for perfect. I was looking for better. Yeah, whoa. It's kind of plated on in places. I mean, it's stuck. Then, but stuck. I've been on a good roll with this thing for a while. I haven't had to replace any bearings or anything. Which means that I haven't taken it all apart. That's typically when I clean. <laughs> when I have to, when something breaks down, I have to repair something. All right, good, 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 good. Moving right along. Be strategic and throw that cold chisel back in the drawer. That could come in handy. All right. Uh, Cord's been bothering me. Let's get rid of some of it. All right. Let's uh, put this back together.
everything's ready, last pass, two sides. Done. And then dial in my engine 13. thing to do is but I'm done hurrah 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 that's great done 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 wrap them up get them to the turner